You don't think the shoes will fit, but they do. It's just goes right over. So in this video, we're gonna go over walking on tippy toes. We have two kids with autism, Ezra and Simon, and Simon is on his tippy toes all the time. But uh, Ezra, we never had issues with tippy toes at all. So Ezra's seven years old and he's level three on the spectrum and Simon is level one on the spectrum. So a much more mild autism. And he is the one we'll be talking about a lot uh, today with the tippy toes. So they estimate that about 9% of people who are autistic have that tendency to walk on their tippy toes. And you might say, well, that doesn't seem like a lot, but compared with the 0.5% um, of neurotypical people that have that tendency, it's, it's significant. And so we wanna share our story with uh, kind of what brought us to braces, no braces, do we care, should we care, not. There's a lot of uh, controversy as well on this topic. Um, and so we wanna share our story of kind of what brought us to do what we did and how that's working for us, so. And be sure to put in the comments your experience with toe walking, if that's something that you do or your kids do, and we would love to hear your opinion on that. It's good to remember that it is typical for toddlers to walk on their toes as they're learning how to walk for about the first three months. It's important to be aware of the long-term ramifications of spending lots of time on your tiptoes. And we do want to mention uh, the reason we're making this video is to increase awareness, to try and be helpful and, and educate people and share our story with Simon. And we'd love to hear your story as well in the comments. Please know that no one's paying us at all. Um, you know, there's no product that we're trying to sell you or anything. We're simply telling our story with our son. One thing that was interesting when we were traveling to all the national parks when we lived in an RV with our five kids, two who are autistic, is we would almost always have shoes on Simon's feet because we were going on hikes and we were always outside. And so a lot of times we didn't notice that he was actually spending almost all of his time on his tiptoes. It's pretty difficult to tell whether or not they're on their tiptoes because sometimes you can see here Simon is actually walking on his toes, even though you might not notice because of his shoes. But here, it's very obvious that he's spending all this time on his toes because he's barefoot. You can get away with really tiptoeing a lot and not being able to see it that much with shoes. A lot of times, children will only spend some time on their tiptoes and will keep their ability to stand flat on their feet. And so that isn't a problem. But if you do notice that your child spends most or even all of their time on their tiptoes, especially when they're walking and standing, then you may wanna to talk to a specialist. A good close friend of mine gave me permission to share her story. Um, we've known each other our whole lives and as she told me about her oldest son, I was actually really surprised. I didn't realize that they had had so much trouble with him with walking on tiptoes. Now her son isn't actually even autistic, and yet this has been a huge issue with him. As her son was growing up, he would go to the well checkups and see the doctors, and the doctor and even, even physical therapist said, you know, he'll grow out of toe walking, it's not a big deal. And so that's what she thought. She thought, hey, it's not that big of a deal. And then when he was in kindergarten, he actually lost his ability to stretch to a 90 degree angle, which was very concerning. And so they actually had to drive far away to a children's hospital and get some pediatric um, orthopedic help. And he had to do casting for several weeks, which can you imagine a five-year-old in casts? I mean, he could barely walk. He was able to walk because they had these special shoes, but it was a really difficult thing for them to go through, especially when she knew in her head this could have been prevented pretty simply. Now her son is 11 years old and they're still dealing with the ramifications of spending all of his time on his tiptoes. And it's something that I think the younger, when they're younger, it's just their feet are so much more malleable. Than, yeah, than it's a lot that. easier to fix when they're younger, but... Because we did a lot of casting too. Mark, actually our, our oldest son, he was born with club feet and so 
I mean, it was crazy what they were able to do at that young age. We did casting every week and, and I mean, literally brought his feet out like that just mm. from just from doing the casting. So their feet are very flexible at the younger age. So taking care of things sooner rather than later. Um, it makes a huge it's, difference. It's a big difference, yeah. yeah. So my friend's son is 11 years old now and he still has a really hard time going flat on his feet. It's really painful for him. And so even though they've done a lot of physical therapy with him, he most likely will have to get casting done again during the summer. And can you imagine an 11 year old having to have casts on both legs and feet just so they can stretch the heel out more because he doesn't use those muscles. And what's interesting and kind of amazing about the human body is that it will adapt to the way that you use it. And so he's not using his heel, and so his heel doesn't have the padding on it like a person that uses the heel would have. And so when he puts the heel down, it kind of hurts and it's sensitive. And so he, of course, doesn't want to. It's uncomfortable for him. After Ezra had a near-death experience when he was little, we decided that we wanted our family to focus more on experiences rather than possessions. So we sold our house, moved into an RV, and decided to travel to all the national parks in the U.S. Please consider subscribing. We post daily of our unique normal of these crazy adventures with these five kids. Two who are autistic. So really, because of this experience, like if we hadn't had this experience with her friend, we probably wouldn't have worried too much about Simon. Like he yeah. walks on his tippy toes, so what? Uh, like whatever. Well, because um, at that time, our pediatrician and physical therapist who were working with him told us, oh, he'll probably grow out of it. It's not a big concern. And Simon, he's he, he's doing that a lot. He was on his tippy toes the majority of the time. And yeah. so... Um, but after, you know, talking with my friend, I'm like, you know, I think that we should, we should go and just go and talk to, and you were the person who did it. You went and, and talked to the orthopedic surgeon and was like, hey, what do you think about this? Is this an issue? Is there any preventative thing that, you know, isn't very evasive? And, and that's where the braces came in. And the cool thing about doing the braces so early is he got used to it super fast. Like he, he didn't like yeah. it at first. But like after a couple of days, he he's fine with it. And like he's never had a problem with it. So that's a, a huge advantage too, I think, of doing things when they're really young is they seem to just get used to things quickly, um, to changes and stuff. And so like if, again, we were to do this two years down the road, I think it would have been a lot harder. Whereas, yeah. whereas I mean, a couple of days and he's fine. And like he's fine with me putting on the braces and he just plans on it every day. And it's like not a problem. So... Um, it doesn't really limit him at all now, which is which is nice. Ready? You ready for your little brace? Yeah. You like your brace? So that little pad protects his foot from these straps. And then, you don't think the shoes will fit, but they do. It just goes right over. Good job, Simon. You can do it. You can help. Yeah. Yeah. Push it. Push it on. Oh, we gotta get your tongue. There you go. Get your tongue. Yeah. Get the tongue. There you go. Oh, now it'll work. Good job. Good job, Simon. Yeah, put that down. Here you go. Put it down. <gasps> Good job. Give Daddy five. Yes! <laughs> now, of course, if a person, whether you're autistic or not, wants to be on your toes and you're an adult, like, go for it. <laughs> like, if you're more comfortable that way, then go for it, do that. But with children, as they're growing, and if they spend all their time on their tiptoes, just like my friend's experience, this can really cause problems with the growth of your foot. And you want your child's feet to grow properly so that they can use them to their full advantage as they're older. If they want to go running, if they want to do track and field or something, and they're a tiptoe walker, 
that's going to be really, really difficult because their foot hasn't developed the way that it needs to to be able to run like that. There is controversy with braces because most kids don't need them. I mean, most kids don't need them. And even at 9% of autistic people who walk tiptoe, most of them won't need braces when they're little, but some will. And I think it's really important to increase awareness of like really simple preventative way that's not invasive and you know, as invasive as down the road if you do have Surgery problems. Yeah. So it's probably in large part due to both Mark's experience, our experience with Mark with his club feet, um, just knowing the whole casting process and although it's amazing and wo <laughs> wonderful that it can be done, it is a pain and yeah. it's not fun. Um, and, and then obviously her friend as well. So having those two experiences, it's like, if there's something that we can do even every now and then to, to help this potential problem to not happen, then let's do it. Right. And so yeah. these the braces that Simon wears are just super simple. Um, like I said, he got used to them really fast and they're really helping. You can find a pediatric orthopedic office near you or an orthopedic surgeon, and they can be the ones to tell you if there's going to be a problem or not and, and give you the different resources and options available to you. Simon was diagnosed with mild autism when he was two years old. You can see that video right here. And check out our autism playlist right here. And remember, if you have a child who's autistic, you're in good company. <laughs>